from the vault, high atop the pastoral center of the Diocese of Camden, you're listening to Talking Catholic. Hello and welcome to another episode of Talking Catholic. It's Carrie Janice and I'm excited to be back with my good friend, Mike Walsh. <laughs> it, you know, I'm going to have to accept the fact that we're friends. I'm not I'm not comfortable with it. Not frenemies, just like you and Donna. We are actually friends. <laughs> we are actually friends. That's right. If, you, if anyone listened to the, the podcast from a, a, probably a few weeks ago now, it was uh, with Donna Ottavio and Britt and I lovingly referred to her as my frenemy. But in your case, you are not my frenemy. You are, we are you just, are, we're, we're good just, friends, we're actually. That's we, we have... Good and then friend. That's right. We are good friends. Oh, man. You're going to make all the other hosts so angry. Yeah, that's bad. Sorry, they already, Mary. They already Sorry, dis- Mary Noah. They already dislike you because you're the golden child of the dogs. <laughs> all so right. But- we're going to digress from that and move on. <laughs> Welcome to Talking Catholic, everybody. No, Here I, with I, Mike Walsh. No, I, too bad. You brought it up. I'm going to mention it. The uh, So, you know, I, I always enjoy, uh, you know, uh, ribbing all of my co-hosts for, you know, when we're on the show, because I don't know how to show my love except through sarcasm. <laughs> um, but um, it is, you know, Carrie deserves credit because not only does she do the podcast with me, uh, she also has her own show. And she deserves a lot of credit because not only she has her own YouTube show, that is, um, because not only does she do a great job with her show, uh, Youth Ministry Insights on the Talking Catholic uh, YouTube channel. Um, she is so far ahead of getting all of her stuff to us. <laughs> like, I think she's like seven weeks ahead now with all of her episodes <laughs> being pre recorded and they're all top notch. She gets us really good cover photos for it. And she, she fills out all of her blurbs like weeks ahead of time so we can set up the pod, the, uh, the, the uh, little show notes for each episode. So, uh, you do deserve I a lot try. of credit for I being try. the Golden Channel. That's, I think, I think that's something to, I, cause, I, the truth of the matter is that we're like, this is our 193rd episode, oh, I believe, that cool. we're recording right now. And, um, you know, I've done now 193 of these things. Well, that's not true. I've done 192. I stepped off from one of them. Mm-hmm. And uh, which actually you co-hosted, it, co-hosted in my place that night. Um, the um, Golden I'm still, Child again. <laughs> yeah, exactly. <laughs> there it is. I, all I, I know, oh, Carrie, Carrie, oh, Carrie can be my co-host. That'll be fine. I'll just produce it. But um, but it's true. Like, I'm not like that. I'm not, you know, yeah, that's it. Okay, that is I, a unique... here's, a, here's a glimpse into my uh, life back in high school, which will, or really all throughout school years, will give you a glimpse into who I am. The teacher assigns the homework, and I start in class right there at that moment. I mean, that's just how I am. To stay ahead, you have to be like, way ahead and this way you don't fall behind when you have a lot on your plate and that's how I always function and it uh in some areas alleviates some anxieties and like I'm not a procrastinator so that anxiety is away from like oh no it's the night before and it's due so there you go that's how well in that case you and I are that's how I function (laughs) we're a very good pair because I'm only good in crisis season emergencies yeah exactly (laughs) when when it's like uh, you have oh I have no time to prepare we're good friends that's that's right (laughs) that is why we are good friends um but anyway so but we are here today and um we actually have a great guest with us someone who's who's actually been on the podcast semi-recently we, we had him friend. on, uh, I think, the day after he became a priest, right? Isn't that when we it was him? right then, yeah. yeah. It was, it was, he, was, he was the baby priest. He still was the baby priest of the he could, Yeah, he's a baby priest until the next round of priests come through. Yeah, so. which is next year. So you, God years? willing, yeah. I will be the youngest for two more. Oh, for one, because oh, the that's upcoming right. not just ordained next seven, the next are, younger, are older than you. Yes. The upcoming deacons, so he will transitional be, deacons. He will be the babyest priest for wow, quite some time. Wow, <laughs> that's cool, Father. Well, well, why don't we introduce you we so should. at least that's they know point. who the, this man that the baby priest is. So, My name is Father Peter Gallagher from Holy Angels Parish in Woodbury, New Jersey. All Thank right. you for coming back. This there is great. Thank you. Is. Thank you for having me. No, actually, I think this is also the, the closest I've ever had a previous guest on before. I usually like oh, to spread them out pretty there's far. There's a reason, though. There's a reason. The Holy Spirit? Besides that, okay, <laughs> and we're gonna get into it. How father's leaving soon to yeah, that's go true. back to the North American College in that's true. Italy. So, so we had to get him before he goes. I know, because then because once they go to Rome, because he was there for a couple of years uh, prior to being ordained, and now he's going back again. And I find that as many times as I try to get these guys on from Rome, they are entirely too busy. Well, and it's a six-hour claim. time difference. I mean, there's a lot of factors there. I'm told that's the reason why, though I, I was able to get a hold of Father Romano, and he ended up calling me back uh, from a piazza in Assisi. 
Uh, so I don't know how busy they actually were, but uh, a, sorry, Father life. Romano. I, sorry. <laughs> but it was during the summertime, though. He was off the job. It was fine. Gotcha. The, uh, but anyway, Father Peter, thank you very much for joining us. Yes, and so good we kind of wanted, you. yeah, we kind of wanted to see, you know, have a conversation with you just, you know, before you leave about how your first couple of months have been since uh, your ordination. And uh, I know that you've uh, had a. From what I can tell, you've had a busy parish life now because I've been following your social media posts. You, I, I don't know who, how quickly until they put you in charge of uh, of s- posting a daily social media reflection. For Holy Angels, I have officially s- distanced myself from doing that after <laughs> next Monday. Oh, okay. <laughs> but Which would be... You've been doing it for how long? What, two months? Yes. So I like uh, communicating the gospel and sometimes you have to be creative mike i think that, you know very well and so does carrie i am and you have you so you you've so you've had sort of an interesting way you've you've taken the first letter of the alphabet and you've come up with 26 posts i'm assuming 26 posts i i'm going to assume you know the alphabet the 26 <laughs> posts uh all based on that and so for a you know it refers to, to something and like that so i i guess my first question is uh, what made you want to do that and or who made you do that <laughs> I will say two sources, maybe uh, who you previously mentioned, the Holy Spirit. And, of course, uh, <laughs> naturally. I actually got the, uh, there's Bishop Vetter is the bishop in Bismarck, but he was a priest at our seminary mm. uh, in Rome. And he said that one Lent, I believe, he told his parish, look, I will preach a very short homily and then we'll give you a five minute talk on something regarding our faith starting from a to z mm. and so i have to say i was inspired by that i somehow was back in the mu- back in the memory and i said you know what? i can do this on social media so that's, that's a really good idea oh cool. yeah i, I like, like that. that well and you know that because that's that's one of the reasons this podcast exists is to give glimpses into you know elements of of our faith that maybe don't get talked about very often um but i i like the fact that you've done it in a in a daily and very um, consumable way, like your 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 social media posts on Holy Angels Parish in Woodbury, New Jersey, on their Facebook page. Uh, you know they're not overly long; they're just these these cute little missives. And you've taken a, a little technique with each one, and that's not easy to do. And so Carrie and I are both content creators. That's you know how we refer to ourselves nowadays. Um, so coming up with twenty six unique, cute pithy, <laughs> you know, stories about stuff of our faith is, is not easy to do. So I'm curious from A to Z, uh, you know, what were some of the more notable things you uh, you I, instructed us and about? And I want to hear what was some of the hardest to come with, come up with from the letters. So uh, I do have to say about 10 times I went to Catholic Encyclopedia. Oh, and I, cheat, cheat. At the top of it, it has A to Z and it, <laughs> and it puts things out and I'm like, okay, so I'm at you know, W and yeah. I'm like, what? Right. Or, or Z. I was oh, very, gosh. I was very happy with Z yeah. and Q. I was stuck with Q and I was like, what am I going to do? And then I was like, ah, oh, I know where I can go. <laughs> but I, but I think, uh, I think short and sweet, uh, makes it more attractive and just very consumable and yeah. very like, uh, I mean, I know <laughs> Carrie, you're going to laugh. Uh, I uh, I might get a, a WhatsApp message for someone, and I I have a gut instinct. If it's about more than two minutes, I put it away. I'm like, okay, this is for later. <laughs> so yeah. it's just something about our we like short and sweet. Yeah, and so true. I was like, let's make it usable. If, if only my YouTube hosts I would do the same thing. My YouTube hosts, I tell them the same thing. Father, I'm so happy. Mio, actually, <laughs> when you come back from Rome in a year, uh, would you like to be the next YouTube, ho- uh, YouTube oh, host for, for a Talking man. Catholic? What go. about uh, every video under five minutes, Mike? Hey, what a, what a unique <laughs> I'm concept. Quitting. I'm quitting. <laughs> Father I'm quitting. Peter. So, I, so we've done... <laughs> Those seven many... episodes that are pre-recorded are all getting deleted <laughs> right now. <laughs> So, but it's true. It's it's a, when, so when we developed the YouTube show last, you know, going into last January, I said to the host, I said, make sure you keep them short. You know, we want them under ten minutes, ideally between five to ten minutes. Seven to nine would be a good range. And within a month, I was getting sixteen minutes, thirty-one oh. minutes. I'm like, guys, you're not getting what I'm trying we to. We all say. have a lot of good things to say. But here's the important. I think ed- that's on the editor, isn't it? On the editor w- to well, like edit down stuff. Well, we were trying to be kind to you. You'll <laughs> notice in season two, we're no longer kind um the uh we've been very direct in our in our edits now but 
but fa- what Father uh, Peter really understood very quickly and ha- is doing it in a great way is you don't, in social media particularly, and maybe people don't care about this, but they're listening right now, but in today's society, um, you know, it's not a bad thing that we're giving people very short bits because there's so much information out there that it actually is a good thing. And by focusing on something small, like your, like whatever your definition for that particular day is, and having a small conversation of it, it's easy to remember. So not only are you giving the audience an opportunity to be a part of something where they know they're not going to have to necessarily put in a ton of work. It's not an academic class. Father Peter has been in enough classes recently <laughs> where he has listened to professors drone on and on and on about a lot of very esoteric topics that are important to our faith and he should know about. <laughs> However... The, the lay person really doesn't need that level. It's great if they do, do, and it's great if they want it, and there's plenty of them that are, and certainly Carrie would be one of them, I would think. Um, but for most, of, for most lay people, you know, a, a simple five-minute explanation on, so what was W, if you come to think of it? W was water. What? Okay. And I, and I, I was actually, not expecting that. I'm going to give my, uh, my wonderful camera specialist, that's, that's a new term. Sure. We're going to go with it. Okay. Michelle, who is our parish secretary at Holy Angels. Yeah. I, you know, for water, I wanted to make it maybe interactive in a way. Mm-hmm. And so we finished with a blessing of holy water, which oh, Michelle cool. got and, and everyone else got virtually. But, uh, you know, Michelle got doused. Splash. Doused. <laughs> yes. Well, if it makes you feel any better, when Bishop Sullivan, when we record his stuff and he does a blessing, the I and my photographer get wailed every time, and finally we, we had to tell Bishop, "Like Bishop, you know, this is thousands of dollars of equipment." Yeah, <laughs> I was just thinking that. Like, try to miss the equipment. Feel free to get us, but try to miss the equipment. The uh, but but that's the point is that you know you you and then in, with the other thing you do, and I think I may have made fun of you on one of your posts about <laughs> a technique so you use. It was, it, actually, I even felt bad about it after I made. I posted it underneath the post. Um, the um, but you two try to make them sort of playful and and fun and so i still haven't quite figured out why you did it but you had one where you you were it was so simple and i knew exactly what you're going for and it was so adorable but you were just sitting at a desk and you did a slow turn pan back to the camera and then you went into your thing and i saw that and i laughed and laughed because it was just so sweet it was so sweet i love that i don't even remember the time i don't even remember what that word was michelle gets another shout out for that one. Oh, really I got I have to meet this Michelle woman. She's she's a, a creative genius. Come to Holy Angels Parish, Mike. Nah, 80, okay. the, the office is new office, eighty one uh, Cooper Street. <laughs> That's right. That's right. You even come to think of it, I believe you even did one uh, sh- uh, showing it off, showing off the new spot. Yeah, yes. that's right. Was that O for office? I did not go O for <laughs> office. <laughs> o for I don't even remember actually. <laughs> that was a, that was a Catholic uh, encyclopedia one. It it may have been. <laughs> The good part is, Mike, or the bad part, they're still there. That's <laughs> true. There. You can always find them. But I am I'm curious. going to go back and look. Because I didn't see it. Uh, what, out of curiosity, what was X? Oh, so X was St. Francis Xavier, oh. who is one of my favorites. Oh, nice. nice. So, good choice. Uh, since he's a Jesuit and connected to St. Ignatius, one of your good co-hosts, Donna, of had to mention her. Yes. Well. So, <laughs> but I'm happy about that. Oh, that's excellent. I love that. And yes, if if you ever are in a room with Donna and she spends more, she, it's been more than three minutes since she's talked about St. Ignatius. <laughs> something something has true. gone terribly wrong. Um, but no, that was, you know, that was really a uh, a great series that you did. And I'm actually one of the things that are kind of sad about you going back to Rome is that you won't be able to do that for the parish, though you could do it for the diocese. I do know their communications director and he, I do seem to recall him asking if seminarians could do stuff from Rome, but a priest doing something from Rome would be awfully nice. I'd love to get missives from Rome. One time I read in the Bible, it says, ask and you shall receive. You know oh, what? There it is. I like it. I think we're going to get, there I think it is. we're going to give you an ad hoc. Stay tuned. We're going to give everybody. you an ad hoc talking Catholic show. And anytime you want to send a video message for the Diocese of Camden uh, to be posted on the Talking Catholic YouTube page, I will do that. So, And, and it will include Father Michael Romano. 
Oh, you know what? If you can a, do, okay, a you know, punch going on is, over here. Is. Okay, first of all, I, I just think, roped him in. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so here's the deal. Apparently, Father Peter thinks he has more power than he has because the director of communications has never been able to get him to get on camera for anything other than at iRace. That was the only time I was ever to get him on ca- camera. Maybe he will be kind enough to be a camera person as a humble oh. servant, humble priest as that he is. you might be able to get him to do. That is true. And he does listen to this podcast, so you might be... And then put it on selfie mode and there he is. <laughs> there, that's right, because he won't know any better. So that'll be fine. The, uh, oh, but that's wonderful. I love that, that. That would be a good prep into your YouTube channel or your youtube show coming on our talking catholic channel for 2021 so Uh-oh. this is this is 2021 this is all... i'm not waiting that long I he said when he comes now. back he comes back no i want him now now i want him to do like uh oh, messages okay. from from no, but i'm saying the... then his whole show his oh, whole yeah, yeah, like yeah, yeah. well let's see how know, the ask let's... a young priest or whatever we're gonna call it let's know. see how his Baby ad hoc priest? show does first know. We'll you know see. who knows he might be terrible that I'm, i gave him a lot of credit for those those youtube videos uh, you know this is the Facebook videos. You know, we'll see what he comes up with. All right. That's good. All right. We'll see. That's good. Speaking of which, how how long are you in? It's a, I guess it's Rome. It's a really yes. Vatican City, right? Technically. Right. Right on. We're right, right. on the. We're on the line. Both and. Yes. I just know that because when I had to send mail over to you in the last Rome. five years, it was or no Vatican, Vatican was City, Vatican, yeah. and the postman would go crazy trying to find <laughs> it, like because he had to put it all in for customs, and it was always very interesting. But anyway. Rome, right on the border there. You're right, but you're right. I mean, you are right there by St. Mm-hmm. Peter's and where it is all. It's all at. How long are you there for your studies? Mm-hmm. What does that all entail, and what are we looking at? To, to you know, how long are we gonna have to miss you for over here in the Camden Diocese because we are well, sending the, you back to Rome. The first question is, why are you going back to, to Rome? So I have uh, one more year of study for my uh, license, licentiate degree in moral theology. So uh, rather than the American system where it takes four years to get a master's, um, it's taken three years to get a bachelor's degree um, under the pontifical system. And then last year, in my last year of priestly studies, I started this new degree. And the bishop asked uh, early last year if I could finish it, meaning I would go back now to do this one year, more year of study. So I'll be back in June God willing, when you know the school year's over and mm-hmm. I finish that degree, mm. oh. so. And you know, we hear you know in our line of work, we hear about these degrees a lot. But to be completely truthful with you, I have no idea what a moral theology licensure, what what benefited mm-hmm. that, that to the to the diocese for you to have that, other than the fact that I think it means uh, some and, letters after your yeah, your name. You get the cool letters after your name, yeah. So it does mean that, <laughs> which uh, you know matters to some. Yeah. to maybe a few, a handful of people. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Uh, it means that uh, in certain maybe circles, I could have some weight in talking about moral issues. I know, for instance, like an example would be that uh, there's certain moral boards or ethics boards like in hospitals, or um, I could be a help to the diocese with big questions, new new technology, new developments in science, in medicine, in ethics you know, culture and say like, what, what does the church teach on this and why Mm -hmm, the key is mm -hmm. why too. Yeah. Yeah. That's so important these days because with science advancing and technology advancing so much in, you know, there, there's a lot of questions is this morally correct. And I know Mm -hmm. I came across them myself with some personal uh, things that my family was going through. And I asked our, my pastor and he said, ask, um, and he named a priest that was, younger, a lot younger than him that had only been out of the North American college with the moral theology degree, probably about 10 years. And, um, and he was way more in tune than up with that because it's ever changing. I mean, to keep up with it and you being younger and of this generation that is into the ever changing technology, I'm sure you're absorbing it a lot better than say an older priest going back to school, trying to navigate all of that Mm -hmm. makes a lot of sense. But yeah, yeah, that's uh, that is true. And there, there are a number of different kinds of uh, degrees you can get. You know, off the top of your head, can you recall some of the other degrees that are cap- that you can get uh, once you've passed your priesthood? Yes. Uh, so, just for example, in our diocese, there's priests that have a canon law degree. Mm-hmm. There's priests that have a degree in scripture or a degree in uh, liturgy or sacraments, and so those those are pretty much the main areas and um they're all important in different ways so yeah 
it's good that we have them in the diocese. Yeah, and it is. And it, uh, the truth of the matter is, it's very useful. And it's actually been useful to me in my job because I'll find the people who have these particular expertises. When we have a, you know, we've had, I'm trying to think off the, like I, the canon lawyers I end up talking to a lot. Mm -hmm. um, but, but you know, I will talk to other people about, you know, certain nuances of the faith when we'll be doing a communications package on something, or oftentimes I'll get uh, contacted by secular media and, you know, they'll ask a very unusually specific mm. and deep dive question that a poor little PR guy is not going to know the, <laughs> the answer to, and I'll have to reach out to somebody. And it's nice to actually have those experts, so I, I yeah, don't need to... Great resources. Yeah, they really are. It's, it's particularly when um, the Pope... Uh, uh, puts out an encyclical or an exhortation. Sure. Uh, oftentimes, that's beyond my pay grade, and I'll <laughs> bring in one of the one of our experts to mm -hmm. kind of get me up to speed. Yeah, that makes sense. You should do that, Mary. I mean, Mary, <laughs> you should do that, Carrie. I am not your co-host, Mary. <laughs> it's the golden towel, Carrie. Remember, <laughs> she, I was I, before I came. I here, should I was, do what though? What do you mean? Get a degree? You can get, yeah. I, oh, I, actually, I have a couple of friends that. I'm uh, so happy I'm done with school. I'm uh, sorry. I'm I don't sorry. Know. To I'm going to. I'm going to. You just can't pay me to go back. Right now, <laughs> Carrie has told me, Mike, that she's not a book person and that I, really? I have to read That's a lot. Very, very, you know, it's very, kinda, very, very true. It's a lot what I do. Here's the thing, though. True confessions on the podcast we, here. <laughs> didn't we open this conversation with how you're such a great student and you're so far ahead of everybody else? Because, <laughs> and I'm glad of your that style? was done. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know. I think uh, I think a master's degree in theology would be would it would do me well. You well. It would it would do me well. I mean, it definitely wouldn't hurt to to have that. It really does just come down to time, and you know when you know you have your full time job and then a part time job, and then you have the people you're, like you asking you to do more. It's uh, hard. Carrie, you're talking <laughs> and then to the, the child. And, Carrie, you're talking to the wrong guy. Uh, I got yeah. my master's in public relations while I had a while we were pregnant, and he was. I think he was four when I finally ended oh, up getting my degree. It can so. be done. You, you do prove it can that be. it can and, be done. And Many do the, go back to school later in life. It's and just, you, the truth of the matter is, I actually am really happy I did it, not just because of the knowledge I got, but there is there is a benefit to going going back into the academic true. world and kind of getting refreshed. And uh, it is it's particularly no, for I, people like you and me, Carrie, who maybe were not the wonderful readers that uh, <laughs> Father Peter is, um, to just go back and, and get a, like, you don't even need to get a degree. Like you can go and audit classes and stuff like that. I, I encourage people to do that on a regular basis. It, it is a- I'll pray about it. Okay. <laughs> Moving on. <laughs> well, you were gonna say something. Formed. Uh, mm -hmm. Formed is a great resource. Awesome. It is yes. a great resource. And then, speaking of time, you know, 45 minutes talk mm -hmm. does you a lot of good. Does it you is a lot of true. Good. And I did do a lot of, a lot. I, I'm familiar with Formed and also Ascension Presents has educated yes. me a lot. Like a lot of, you know, we, we come into contact with these people that know we are into our faith and we work for whether it be the mm -hmm. diocese, our church, your priest, whatever it might be. And they ask you qu deep questions about the faith and you're like, oh, Oh, at least it happens to me. Maybe for you, you've been studying for so long. I'm like, I don't know the answer to that. Okay, let me see if there's a, a Father Mike Schmidt's video on it first, and then I can <laughs> get some points and maybe even send them that video as well, but like be able to at least initially answer it. I've come across that a lot recently with um, having a lot of exposure in the high school with The Rock. We had a whole episode mm -hmm. on that probably going back almost a year ago now, which is a Catholic club at a public school. And some of the kids that go there are Christian, so they ask us different questions about where the differences lie and the teachings of our faith versus maybe what they've been taught, believe, etc. So I've been using Father Mike Schmitz for a lot of a lot of answers to those deep questions I've been getting. And the Father Mike Schmitz videos mm -hmm. under ten minutes. Yes, they, they are. are. They are. <laughs> uh, Listen, I, I, Father Peter, I know, I'm so I've happy noted. that you understand this because it's funny when we sometimes they're under ten minutes. They usually yeah, are. Usually, they usually are. are. But we actually, you know, we talk about us. We're very comfortable talking about Ascension Presents on this podcast because I made it quite clear to everyone that our Talking Catholic YouTube page is a complete ripoff of Ascension Presents. Different hosts, different format, different perspective and stuff like that. But I use that as sort of the example of what I wanted to create in our diocese, which mm -hmm. was easily consumable, short, articulate, intelligent presentations on certain topics, because our topics go into areas that Ascension Presents does not, which is the benefit of ours versus theirs. Mm -hmm. um, but you, honestly, it's not a it's not a them versus us kind of thing. It's a, in addition to, for everyone watching yeah. Ascension Presents, please consider watching Talking Catholic too, because there are some interesting perspectives from our, our local homegrown talent, particularly 
uh, Carrie Janice. Listen, mine are not th- that long. Only when I've had a, like somebody else I'm with me, and they mm. went on for a while. Well, They've and you were smart long. with yours. The, the The ones that you knew were going to be long, you broke up into sections. Yes, which is part the right one, way to do two, it. Part two. Yeah. yeah, whatever. Carrie, but, that comment was in no way directed to you. Uh, thank you. Again, There's other actually. hosts besides me. Yeah. Let's move on. <laughs> <laughs> our, our people listening are like, all right, I'm over this. They're like, this is a 55 minute podcast, <laughs> oh. and we're only 24 minutes in, and they're like, okay, we've been hearing all about this like long it's, stuff. It, hey, listen, I, I can't predict what the uh, what the, the listeners like. I, well, here's the deal, and I, I talked about this on a recent episode, I think. Uh, Mary uh, McCusker is a very good co-host. And but she always comes up with an agenda before we start all of these things. And until she came on board, I never had an agenda because I, I've I've always liked the organic nature of these. So we were talking about con- easily consumable as far as YouTube shows, the ta- the podcast episodes. I, I knew you were going to defend it. I, I, of course, <laughs> I I'm going to defend it. I want it long and winding. <laughs> Talk <laughs> radio. It, that's exactly. I mean, that's really what it is. This is you're another right. version you're, of talk radio. You're right, Mike. You're right. Let's move on. Okay, well, <laughs> Father Peter, what's nice is uh, that is recorded, so I will always have Carrie saying you're right on the my on my oh, podcast. So Carrie, back to Father Peter. Well, so here's what here's the funny thing. I, I also enjoy giving people uh, a glimpse into the into the backstory of all of this stuff. So Carrie and I were we're actually talking a little bit about the podcast, and the number one thing I said was, I don't. I don't want to talk about anything. I want we, we should be focused on <laughs> spiritual stuff, and we should not be talking on Catholic tactics. And what we've done so far is for twenty five talk minutes. About, <laughs> talk about <laughs> tactics. So Carrie, okay. I want to talk about about spirituality things. So yes, ask let's Father go. Peter a good let's question. Go. Let's go. All right, uh, Father Peter. October seventh is the feast day of Our Lady of the Rosary, mm-hmm. and really, like the whole month of October is dedicated to Our Lady of the Rosary in, in a very special way. I like to hear how your devotion to the rosary maybe came to sure. came to be and uh what are some ways or maybe ideas that you can share with our viewers about encouraging them to pray the rosary because i know it could be a lot of times intimidating if you're not a daily rosary prayer or you don't even you know let's not even say daily maybe if you don't even uh enjoy praying it on a monthly basis however how are some ways that maybe it will be more appealing to those listening to pray it more and and understand that relationship with Our Lady more. Sure. That's a great question, Carrie. When I came into the seminary at 18, I had prayed three rosaries in my entire life. life. Wow. There was no real Marian dimension to my faith. I remember distinctly praying the rosary on 9-11 when we found out in our grade school that it was a... uh, you know, it had happened, or I think the day after. Actually. Grade school. I'm sorry, I'm going to stop you there for a second. I was thinking you were going to say seminary because it's close to New York <laughs> where you went to sure. college but seminary. Like but in 2001, thinking back I mean. to 2001, you were in yeah. grade school. I was in first grade. Wow. So. <laughs> that's right, Kay. You're not the youngest person. In the no, I'm definitely not. <laughs> I was in pre- sophomore year at college where that happened. So um, <laughs> when, I, when I came to the seminary, I remember learning more about it and, and meeting other college students outside the seminary at Seton Hall who were just, I would say, I wouldn't say rosary prayers. That sounds kind of weird. But they were um, devoted devoted to Our Lady. They, devote, uh, they had found interest in the rosary. They were attracted to the rosary. They started doing it. Um, and one, I really liked praying the rosary with other people. I think I, like, shortly after realize that there's something kind of powerful about that and and especially if it's hard it's something i am not really used to to do it with a group do it with your friends do it in some sort of uh collected way i found a little bit more attractive but also i think um i learned how beautiful and how many years that had been done and as a way to speak to our blessed mother who we love Mm -hmm. we know that she's there for us in our faith um to in, a, in an organized way, in a uh, easy to do way, I think part of uh, a, a one step, like um, an aside, I would say, sometimes we think we overthink devotions. We have to do it the exact right mm-hmm, way mm-hmm. because mass, you know, it has a beginning, it has the middle, it has the end. We always kind of mass is like regularized and ritualized. Right, right. But um, if you're like, I don't want, I can't pray a whole rosary. 
start with one decade of the rosary. Mm -hmm. There's no, nothing wrong with starting with one decade of the rosary. There's nothing wrong with breaking up the rosary throughout the day and doing it imperfectly and forgetting a mystery. And, you yeah. know, like you can make mistakes with devotions and there's no one who's going to say, God's going to say, it doesn't it. count. You didn't <laughs> exactly. do it right. It doesn't work that way. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Um, but I think uh, over the years, um, heard different homilies and different talks about the power in many people from many walks of life, from different cultures, from different families talking about the rosary and all of these wonderful conversion stories. Um, and two ways that I think the rosary uh, can be more attractively prayed is to think um, each De uh, Hail Mary each decade is for an intention. Mm -hmm. It's something we do carry in the young adult group mm -hmm. uh, here at Our Lady of Peace that um, we make it meaningful and we kind of concentrate our prayer. Um, there's a there's a great parishioner from Holy Family that where I was um, previously before Holy Angels last summer. And as a deacon, right? As a deacon, yeah. correct. And uh, he always encouraged me to pray from the heart and to um, almost give Mary a flower for, for all these Hail Marys and wow. just you're building a bouquet and um, really turning it from a rote prayer to something meaningful and something um, powerful to help others and to also speak to our mom, mm -hmm. our spiritual mom. And so I hope whoever is listening today, we know people are listening. We know people will listen. That's true that uh, Mary is inviting you, is encouraging you during this month, especially w um, to pray for peace, to pray for our families and our friends, to pray for those who are alone during these months, um, that Our Lady wants to be with them as well, and that she is taking care of them. And one way to foster a deeper relationship is by praying the prayer she, she gave us. Beautiful, yeah. I love the idea of... Uh, the intentions uh, and broken up any way you like sometimes when i've prayed the rosary it's been the whole rosary for this particular intention or these sure. particular intentions other times uh we break it up by decades right like mm -hmm. who has any intentions for this decade and then the, my favorite personal way to pray it although it takes a little more length of time especially in a group is each bead is for a different intention and each person says a bead of the mm -hmm. rosary and of course there's 50 hail marys uh, ten, 10 Hail Marys on each decade, five decades, but also the Our Fathers, the Glory Be, you know, sure. beads, the beginning beads as well to uh, really make it, like you said, meaningful. But it, it almost gives me, like, there's been times where I've prayed, I, I'm, I personally love praying the rosary. I don't know about you, Mike. Not as much. Like, I, uh, here and there. Uh, what do you want? <laughs> here and there, here, right? No, I, listen, it's funny because Father Peter, I'm kind of in his class in that regard, his prior class anyway, in the sense that, I never understood mm -hmm. the like I never had a particularly strong devotion to to prayer to begin with and then the rosary I I'll be honest with you befuddled me for years. Sure. I believe it was kind of one of these podcasts recently we were we did where I didn't know that you could even I didn't know that there were different days of the week uh for I had no idea. Were you, oh, you weren't on that one. That was, I was uh, you, it wasn't no, me because no. I would have. Yeah, you would have chastised me. Uh, yeah, no, I, I would have went through them all and tried to teach you. Yeah, I had, would have had a little whole lesson after no, the podcast. No, I. Uh, my mother prays the rosary. She's been a devout prayer of the rosary for years, but for whatever reason, it was just never something that I gravitated to. And even to this day, like we, all right, so we're going to back in the techniques again. See, this is why you shouldn't ask me questions. Okay. Uh, no, no, but I do, I, but the thing was, so in the diocese, we did when, the, oh yeah, during we the, did, we did a virtual mm -hmm, rosary. Mm -hmm. That was and That was awesome. That, and it really was, it was quite sweet. And, you know, I, I had to be walked through it because it was just not something I knew inherently, and we were very happy, you know, for the listeners who may not have come across it, um, we encouraged people to submit themselves saying one prayer of the rosary, and over the course of May, we put, we received them all, and we put them in order, and we had a, we had some people do, you know, the Our Fathers and the Hail Marys and all the different elements of it. Um, and then John Kalitz, our, our digital media guru, he edited it all together, we put it out, we put it on uh, the Dialson website, and and I was like, I didn't know how people would react to it, 
I could not believe how many people just loved this video that we'll put it, put, and actually still go back to it today. Of all the videos mm-hmm. we've done, we've seen that's had the greatest increase since it first put out because people will go back and, and watch it. Um, so I absolutely understand it, but I was I never had an inherent, but I love sense. hearing people talk yeah. about it. Most importantly, what I've liked so far is hearing that you can screw it up and no yeah, more. Yeah, there you no, go, no, right? No, no, For everybody worrying about that. Yeah, because I Mike. have worried about that. It's, <laughs> yeah. It's terrible. Yes, yeah, so there's been times where I've been you know praying it on, I tried to daily, I, I developed a devotion in college that way. And I was like, man, I just went through a deck and that had no heart. Like, you know, like when you're working out and you're like, that wasn't even worth it. Like, why did I just waste 10 minutes on that workout? Like I did, I did not put effort into it. Mm-hmm. But I found that when I have every single individual bead and intention, now I'm focused on that intention. And rosaries later, you know, weeks later, I might remember that intention that somebody mentioned in our group or whatever group I was praying it with or my husband who we often pray it together as a family. And it really does um, bring that, that prayer to, um, to life. I don't know how else to say it just makes it Mm -hmm. meaningful, makes it worth it, makes it um, done with so much more heart. And, you know, I I don't know if I ever mentioned this on the podcast, but we have a school here where I'm a youth minister, St. Mary's school, and I teach the eighth grade morality Monday class. And I told them just today we were teaching, and it's a Monday we're recording this, and I said, you know, I always say this to the kindergarten class when I walk in there, or when I did, now with, you know, new rules and stuff, I don't get to walk in as freely, but when I did walk in there, I would say to the kindergarten class, before I left the class, remember, pray with your, and all the little kindergartner kids said, heart, really sweet, you know, you can imagine like 30 kindergartners saying heart, (laughs) it's so cute. (laughs) And I said it to my eighth graders because we begin class with these four different particular prayers that we begin class with. And I noticed like, you know, maybe it was because of the masks on or whatever, but like hardly any of them are really praying it. Some of them are looking around. And at the end I said, guys, you know, just remember to pray these prayers with your heart. And there's, and that's the most, it's the simplest thing. Kindergartners get it. Mike can get it, you know, but when we're praying the rosary, we we just, you pray with your heart and not so much worried about, again, doing it right or messing up, whatever it might be, because it, it can seem intimidating, but um, I, you know the peace that has come with it, I'm sure, Father, you can attest to that. And just St. Padre Pio said, and many of the saints said, it's, it's our weapon, it's our, it's our weapon of prayer. And it's just incredible to see you know, what, what can come out of developing that devotion. So if you are a listener, uh, maybe struggling a little bit with that devotion, Father and I encourage you, to join Mike and pray together. <laughs> no, but we do encourage you to um, to pray, to try it, to try to pray it. I can share a personal story too. My, mm-hmm. my that that fall was there was a lot of adjustment. There was a lot of transition. Naturally, yeah. And it was very consoling to start to pray to Rosary and kind of just figure things out in my first semester of of college, college seminary. And so, I really think the Rosary played a part in like saying like this is all new and like what is going on to like. Okay, here we go. It's very interesting. My devotion came around my freshman year, fall semester of college as mm-hmm. well. And I was praying for a specific intention that did come exactly the way I had asked it to come. And I'm making a very long story short, but um, I remember promising Mary a particular moment in my freshman dorm, kneeling on the ground, praying with this rosary that I had for years, probably 10 years before that I received it, and saying that I never had prayed on it. And I said, Mary, if... If you give me this intention, I'm going to try to do this every day of my life. And wow. here we are still today, 20 years later, praying it. We're going to go Here into I f- am today. <laughs> you weren't in college 20 years ago. We learned that earlier. <laughs> <laughs> I was going to say um, thank you, Carrie, for sharing that. And also, in a, in a later note, um, if you ever hand me a rosary that is kind of on the fragile side, you can be pretty much guaranteed it's going to be broken within days. <laughs> So, <laughs> so be careful about what kind of rosaries you give. I, I, uh, get a nice rosary. If you're, if you're struggling to pray the rosary, maybe yeah. get a nice one and be like, this is rememberable. I'm a fan of the like thick wooden bead ones and, uh, nice crucifix. and bracelet ones. You that know, that actually handmade. begs an interesting question, which I've never thought about until this very moment right now. Neither have I, but you brought it up. I mean, just, I know innately what I like, but I never th- I like what spent time on it <laughs> like since you're both avid rosary users um like I, I have a handful of rosaries i think one is I, one that was given to me by the knights of columbus when i when i joined the knights which was lovely and i i keep that one on me all times and i have a couple of other small ones like i have a a ring one that um 
you know, in case of emergency, I, I would use. Um, uh, and certainly I have now apps for rosaries and things like sure. that. But I am curious, you know, as two people who pray it with some regularity, do you have recommendations for rosaries? Like in terms of, in, in addition to quality, um, like what kind would you recommend to people? So there's a, um, now I believe it is a priest in uh, Madison, Wisconsin, who um, discovered that in World War One, and for sure, and I believe also during World War II, the U.S. government issued rosaries <laughs> to uh, Catholic wow. soldiers. And so someone at some point, maybe someone who was living, you know, had one of these still, and this priest saw it, and it's a, it's a metal rosary um, with uh, St. Benedict medal and a miraculous medal at kind of, you know, the joining mm-hmm. point of all the chains and the beads. Yeah. And uh, the crucifix is called the pardon crucifix, and it has certain words on the back that um, make it different than, you know, a typical wooden rosary or wooden crucifix or something. So anyway, that alone is the only rosary that I have not mentioned or not managed to break. (laughs) However, I've been gifted with three of them in the past nine years and I've lost all three of them. I'm sorry to say. I'm sorry to say. But I recommend if you're listening, that rosary, especially for men. Yeah, you know, it's very, I, it's very like, yeah, uh, let's yeah. Like, pray the rosary. Yeah. Uh, yeah, that sounds very manly. <laughs> I have an Irish one, actually, that uh, I keep in my book bag. It fits on your thumb, and it's just mm-hmm. one decade, and you switch fingers um, as you pray. Oh, so it's a, it's a very small, it's got a, it's got a crucifix at the end, and it's the one I have is... Um, it's like uh, green marble on it from wow. Ireland. And so it's just the one decade and you switch your fingers and you just loop it on a different finger each time, um, which is amazing that A, I have it and B, I know how to use it considering I never... Time to pray on it. Well, well, you know, you guys were talking about how you, you started when you went into the seminary and you started when you... You're right, it's like, okay, I've gone through... My, I've gone through my undergrad. I've gotten a grad school. Apparently, I need to start my doctorate, and then there I'll get into the rosary. See, remember this going back to college, and or yeah. not really college, going back to uh, higher education later in life. Here you go. All right. I'll get my doctorate. Fine. <laughs> <laughs> I, uh, I, you know, for me, I always like to have a rosary on me. I have them in my car. I actually have five in my car. I say one for every seat in the car so that whoever's in my car at me can pray because if it's a car ride longer than oh, 20 minutes, right. I need to I was gonna invite, go with that. invite my uh, car to pray with me because it takes me about 20 minutes to pray the rosary. So if it's a car ride over 20 minutes and you're in the car, rest assured I am going to be handing out one of those five rosaries that are sitting in my car to one of the people sitting in the seats up to five people because that's what my car holds. So there's some in my car. There's um, I, I usually try to wear one on my wrist that uh, was beautifully made by one of our young adult group members who makes them with this very, uh, I guess it's considered twine, and it's pretty durable. Um, and then uh, my particular favorite, though, is one that, uh, well, there's actually, okay, I'm going to say three particular favorites. So you're going to go with first the sentimental one. The one was my grandmother's, and I know she prayed on it regularly. Uh, so in really deep times of need, I turned to that one. One is that rosary that I mentioned in the how I became about my uh, devotion, which uh, had been given to me at my confirmation. Mm-hmm. And it's uh, rose scented and it's from uh, Medjugorje where um, Our Lady has been appearing for many years. So, What's it made I, out of? It's like rose petals, but it's not like, wow. well, there's a hard wooden base. and then That's like, so weird. I was just going to tell you, Gen- uh, my wife has one that she loves and it's made of rose petals. Yeah. I wonder wow. if it came from the same place. Usually Marian apparition sites yeah. will sell these particular ones, at least in my experience. Well, I know it was so. gifted by a friend who had gone to Medjugorje. So, so now it, I'm wondering it, if... Yeah, it look at it. Oh, Mine says it right it on the back of the cross. I'll look at it. Yeah. Okay. And then, um, but I mentioned that the wooden ones, and that is because those are my favorite to kind of pray on because you can really like, I guess they're a little thicker. You can feel, feel the bead. And that's the one that I keep in the car for myself because very often um, I will pray my rosary while driving. I'm not a big fan of listening to music or much while driving. It's really for me that a lot of prayer time takes place in my car. So uh, there's a chapel on wheels (laughs) and I keep that one in the car for me, which is very accessible. It's right to my right. There's like a little, little, um, kind of cubby thing. I don't know what, how else to explain it that I keep it in. So if you want a good grip, the big wooden bead one, that's that's my choice. 
That's good. Although, you know, you could listen to Catholic podcasts in the car while you drive. I mean, I know one I that's really That's when I listen to yours and Donna's, actually. Okay. <laughs> oh, really? <laughs> yeah. Oh, we took you away from the, yeah. the, the rosary. When there's I a, Well, you know what? I go back and forth often. This is especially for our domestic church media listeners. Um, I'm originally from North Jersey, North Archdiocese of Newark, and now my parents since moved a little more west in the, than the Diocese of Patterson. It's a two-hour drive from where I live down here in the Camden Diocese in South Jersey. And very often... We easily once one to up to four times a month i am up there for something or other in north jersey visiting family some kind of celebration or what have you and it's a two-hour drive there two-hour drive back so rosary again takes 20 minutes so we get a rosary in we get a podcast in 55 minutes there get maybe a phone call conversation and there we are to north jersey that, i agree completely it makes a lot of sense <laughs> that's, right that's perfect so so yeah so that's that's my big way to pray my rosary is, is driving or in groups. I am a big fan of groups. Sitting at home, praying the rosary alone for me is probably one of the most difficult things to do. Father, if you ever want to give me a good penance, there it is. <laughs> All to hear. Sit do you, at, do you find alone it because your mind wanders? Yeah, it's just, yeah. it's really hard. I have the, really that's hard. typically that's why my prayer life has been so difficult um, or difficult for me to grasp. Not difficult, but difficult for me to grasp is I do find that my mind wanders. And, and I think that's one of the reasons the rosary has always been sort of you know, a struggle for me and is because there's counting involved and there's keeping things organized. Mm-hmm. And, um, and, but I understand why that's also one of the benefits of it. Um, and the, the repetition, particially when you include, I really like what you were talking about, how you keep an intention with each decade. I, I really think that Even that's, each, bead. each bead rather. Mm-hmm. Um, I really am impressed Try by it, that. Mike. Try it. I think you, I think you may. I'll have to start caring about people or yeah. things, but uh, well, that's. Well, start with your family. <laughs> start with the things you love. Start. Not helping, but okay. um, I'll, uh, I'll keep, I'll keep working on it. <laughs> Mike's probably. sarcasm sometimes goes a little too <laughs> far. A little too dark. <laughs> okay. I think you, I think you also hit on though something important that we're human and we need uh, some like uh, reminder. Yeah. And where our mind wanders and stuff, and I I can say too, if I don't pray with a rosary, it's like, like a de- physical, like a physical, a physical rosary. rosary. I'm like, it's always be- it's a bad. Even though you, know, you have ten less- fingers, right? It's still <laughs> I hard. do. It's still it's still better with a rosary. And then you yeah. know, like just think, also like, it's better to pray to church than your house a lot of times because you have beautiful things right and mm-hmm. so on and so forth so it's in, in, thank you mike for that great <laughs> sure, theological that's, insight that's yeah, no idea what I'm here for. Saying it. <laughs> i only accidentally say <laughs> intelligent things um you know but that's something that's a conversation it's funny that you just brought up uh, father peter about um um the the importance of beauty around us so so i've been having a lot of conversations with our vicar general about uh father robert Hughes about you know the importance of our churches the structures and you know i think in today's times it's easy to look at them as luxuries you know church in in that sense not in our sense of course but secular folks will think of them as luxuries and oh it's not really necessary oh you can do these things from the quiet of your own home ah you know we don't need organized religion even to that point Mm -hmm. and the truth of them and he was and his explanation is you don't understand yet there is no way to translate the beauty of heaven and the beauty of god uh, the, the divinity that surrounds us because it's so beyond us we can't imagine it but we can get close by these beautiful things that are in our churches and even the rosary, even these simple things on our hands that bring us closer to God. Yes, they are man-made and yes, they're through the vision of men and women who have designed them. But the truth of the matter is they're giving us an opportunity in our normal lives where we wouldn't see these things. You know, mm-hmm. you you know, Carrie, your church is one of the prettiest churches in the diocese. It's a, it's a humble church, but a gorgeous church when you walk into it. It's one of the best backdrops we've ever had for a number of the videos that we've done for in South Jersey. Um, and it, there's a magnificence to it that you would simply not see and you, you would, we wouldn't have it in our house, you know? Mm-hmm. Um, and, it, and I think it's important to have these reminders with us. And if nothing else that a rosary provides, even of all the things we've talked about, um, that simple rosary in our pocket that we might feel as we're reaching for keys or just because our hands are cold and we stick it in our pocket. And that's that little moment of reminder of there's something else in the world that Mary, Mary is there for us to, to, to bring our message to God. And, and here's this thing that we can do to settle our minds. I was, I was camping this weekend and, um, with my son and his and several of his friends. And, um, my son was having a difficult time with the quiet of the night and, 
and you know, I was kind of, I was in a different tent and so we were texting back and forth. Um, and I wish I had told him to bring a rosary to pray when he was having those moments. And I, as someone who myself suffers from anxiety, I wish I had thought of that because I have anxiety all the time and mm-hmm. it, I should really, and I do have, a, I have a rosary nearby, but I don't have it in my pocket. And I really think maybe I need to start having it in my pocket. There it is. Yeah, I totally agree. That's personally why I like uh, the, as a female, at least, I mean, men too. Uh, my brother actually wears one all the time, the bracelets, because it's always on my wrist. Yeah. And there's been so many, well, actually, truth be told, every podcast I hold it in my hand and it helps me focus. Um, I'm not essentially praying on it and just even grasping it, right? There's been so many times where there has been those moments of anxiety or just something bad happened and it's the first thing I go to. It's the first the first place I turn to in those worries and those anxieties and it's got me through many moments of difficulty. Um, even just recently, I had some medical things and um, the first thing I turned to was my grandmother's rosary at that point because I was home and it really did uh, bring me a sense of peace and I know that is only connected to heaven and it's a, as we know, a peace surpassing all things. And it's under, it's not understandable to us on this earth, like how God can do it, but he does it. And it could be even as simply through Our Lady's willingness to bring us that peace uh, from heaven. So yeah, I think it's great. So I uh, highly recommend, Mike, you pick one out to put in your pocket. And for all of our listeners too, whether it be, a, a, you know, one that you just, you know, if, uh, Mike asks us what, rosary you like the best but i really think it's it's a personal answer for each of you which one are you gravitating most towards and which one you know is speaks to you and go with that and and try it but most importantly make sure it's a nice one (laughs) because as father peter pointed out they're easy to break yeah and also get get it blessed too don't forget about that the priest's blessing the deacon's blessing i was about to go with that why don't you talk a little bit more yeah bring it to your parish priest and get it blessed yeah yeah so that gives it a little extra um power Efficacy. There's a good word. You know, I, I, I do think we don't utilize the parish priest enough for blessing things. I've had cars blessed. I've had mm-hmm. my, I've had my wife and I got new uh, wedding rings at one point. We brought them back to the, the priest that married us, your oh. pastor right now, and we had the, we had those blessed because we weren't gonna. I mean, it's it would seem ridiculous to wear new wedding bands and not have them blessed. So yeah. the first thing we did was have them blessed and. And, um, you know, it's, uh, yeah. It's, and it's Jesus' blessing, and, and the priests or deacons can bless, so it might not even necessarily need to be your parish priest, but if you can get to the deacon, get to them. You know. Yeah. Any cool stories about giving blessings, since you, you, you can give them and we can't? <laughs> sure. I, um, well, I will say, Carrie, you, you mentioned, and I told you this before, but, like, at some point you were like, do you like do you bless things or like have you blessed a lot of things? <laughs> and and uh, it was it has been a great uh, reminder for me. So to all the people in Washington Township previously and uh, Woodbury, South Jersey, Washington South Township. Jersey, there's a lot of correct. Washington Township. South Jersey, Washington Township. If you've had a Marian image or a cross or something quasi Christian, and I've been out on a run or a drive and it's caught my attention. You might have gotten a little blessing <laughs> as I dream or run by. But also... Because um, you're a big runner. You're an avid runner. I love to yeah. run. But also, uh, I've been trying my best to be present at Masses after Mass or before Mass, but especially after Mass, um, even during the week. And uh, I've been really surprised. I'm there and someone says, can you bless this? Can you bless this? Can you bless this? That's great. That's so, great. Uh, okay. all sorts of different things, but mostly rosaries, um, holy water. I love blessing holy water. It's really <laughs> like awesome. Making it holy making, water. Making <laughs> water, holy water. Yeah. Um, so cool. And uh, different different things. And, and it's also touching. Usually it's like, oh, this is for my aunt. This is for my granddaughter. This is, you mm-hmm. know, things that are personal. They're familial. It's like passing it as a gift. And so um, just to see the person's uh, thoughtfulness. Oh, yeah, I, mean, I want to get them something religious for yeah. some sort of um, moment in their life. So, Come yeah. to think of it, I never had any of the podcast equipment blessed. Maybe I should work on that at some point. Great closing prayer <laughs> right here. Here we go. <laughs> the, um, the, uh, the, I really should start doing that more often. The No, but, you know, see, I like – I that's so – I love talking to young priests because, it, you know, the, the simplicity – of our faith the, and the joy of our faith, I think is oftentimes reflected uh, more noticeably in, in young, because it's still very new to you. 
and that's you know correct. you're you know and that that's not to say that the older priests don't aren't also inspiring it's wonderful to be around but i don't know there's just like watching him talk about this right and this big smile on his face mm-hmm. i love that i think that's that's wonderful so this but thank you great this has really been nice and thank you very much i know we brought you over here at sort of like last minute but uh, we really wanted yeah, to have thank you, you on so much father before you go You're back welcome. to rome carrie thank you for very much for helping me put this all together yeah this is great and to our viewers you know just want to encourage you to pray the rosary and pray for us as we move forward in these podcasts and it's just been beautiful to, to share on that today. Yeah. And please follow all of our social media. We're at Talking Catholic on all of our social media platforms. And, uh, you know, certainly check out the YouTube shows, YouTube channels uh, that Carrie is working on. Uh, but uh, most importantly, just keep coming back every week and uh, we'll promise to keep creating more short content for everybody. <laughs> Have a great week, everybody. We'll talk to you next week. God bless. God bless.